Hi, I'm Mike with Mort Inspection Services. If your house seems to be running out of hot water quicker than normal, then you may have a problem with your water heater, but don't think that your only option is to replace that water heater. There's a couple of things that can go wrong with water heaters that are fairly simple and fairly cheap to fix, and I wanna show you those now. Now, if you don't have any hot water in your home, then there's a couple of things you can check. One is your breaker panel, make sure that the breaker hasn't tripped. And then there's also a safety switch inside the water heater that may have tripped and I'll show you how to check that and then I'll show you these other things which are the thermostat and the heating element which may have gone bad. So let me show you what you've got to do here. Okay let's look real briefly at how these components work together to heat up your water in your electric water heater. This is the upper thermostat, this is a lower thermostat, this is one of the heating elements. The upper thermostat is always a little more complicated than the lower thermostat because it controls the entire operation. It determines if it needs to send power to the upper heating element. And if it doesn't, then it will send power to the lower thermostat, which then will determine if it needs to send power to the lower heating element, which I'm not showing here. So this heating element, this silver part is the part of the heating element that's actually inside the tank, inside the water and that's what heats up to heat up the water. This is the part that's exposed on the outside of the tank and it's got wires connected to each of these two screws to send the 240 volt power. And both heating elements are typically identical in the water heater. Okay, so on the upper thermostat, you'll notice this red button. That's a high temperature cutout switch. If something goes wrong and the heating elements for some reason don't shut off power, the water in the water heater can potentially get hotter and hotter and hotter until it starts making steam and can potentially cause an explosion. So this will shut off power to both thermostats, to both heating elements. It's basically the final safety measure that's in place to prevent the water from overheating and potentially causing an explosion. And sometimes these, these things will trip off and you'll need to remove the cover, reset it, and restore power to your thermostat. Now, if you have to do that regularly, then there's a problem and that needs to be resolved. The other thing on these, right here, that's where you set the temperature. You just use a little screwdriver to turn this and you see it goes from 90 degrees, 125, all the way up to 150. But this is what you use to set the temperature. But let me show you on the other side of these, so this is the part of the thermostat that's actually against the metal tank that senses the water temperature. This is the one that would activate that high temperature cutout. And this is the one that senses the water temperature to turn the thermostat off and on. And this one turns the lower thermostat off and on. So to see how these things work together, let's look at a short animation. Okay, so here's a picture showing how the heating elements and thermostats are wired together. You see the power coming in on screws one and three, and just below that you see the, the red circle, which is the high temperature cutout that we talked about. And then you have screw three, and you've got a brown wire and a blue wire. So let me just tell you first of all that these are just arbitrary colors that I chose. Uh, your water heater and most water heaters aren't going to necessarily have these actual colors, but I'm just using these to be able to trace the wires more easily. So you have the brown wire and a blue wire going to the two heating elements. So now let's put some voltage on the two wires coming into the thermostat. And just as a matter of convention, when you see these yellow circles and they're not moving, then that means there is voltage on the wires, but no current flow because it's an open circuit. So you'll see over on the left side, you've got screw two, and then you've got a screw below that that the yellow wire is connected to. And right there, you've got an internal switch. So when this thermostat detects that the water temperature is below the set point, it will close that switch, which I'm showing in blue, and it will therefore basically produce a call for heat, and that will cause the current to start flowing. And you can see it flowing from screw three uh, down the blue wire to the heating element and up the yellow wire and back and across that internal switch and out line one. And then at some point, the temperature set point will be reached, and you can see this blue switch starting to flash now, and that switch will open up, and it will stop that current from flowing. And that switch, when it opens, it immediately switches over across the thermostat and sends power to the lower thermostat through that purple or pink wire. 
And one thing to note here is that you can only have power to one heating element at a time. Because of that switch over there on the left side of the upper thermostat, it can either send power to that yellow wire or to the purple wire. It can never send power to both wires at the same time or to both heating elements at the same time. So now that the switch on the upper thermostat has switched over, you now have power flowing through that lower thermostat and through the lower heating element. But watch the blue line on that lower thermostat. Now I've just got that to simulate the internal switch. I show it flashing just so you can see it easier. And once that thermostat senses that the water temperature has reached the set point, that switch will open and it'll shut power off to that lower heating element. So now you don't have power flowing to either heating element. So that's how these two thermostats work together. Before we leave the animation, let's take one more look at that thermal cutout switch. So let's suppose that the water temperature gets too hot and that thermal cutout switch trips. As soon as it does, you now no longer have voltage on that brown wire or the blue wire. So there's no power at all to either of the heating elements. And that's how it stops the water from heating up any further. And that's the purpose of that thermal cutout. So unless you've got a really small water heater, you'll have two covers one near the top and one near the bottom. Under this cover is your upper thermostat and your upper heating element. And under this one is your lower thermostat and your lower heating element. So let's open these up and see what it looks like. Okay, so all you need is a Phillips. You can use a handheld or a drill. I'm going to use my quartz drill and pull this cover off. Then you need to remove this insulation. And you have this plastic cover covering up the electrical contacts and it just pops right out. Now before I touch anything, I'm going to use this non-contact voltage detector just to make sure that there is no power and sure enough everything is dead so i won't be dead uh, oh, this should be safe okay so if you're not getting any hot water to your house first thing you need to do check this push it in if you hear a click then it was tripped the next thing you can also do, but you've got to be very careful. So back here, I am turning the power back on to the water heater. You can hear me turn the breaker on now. So now there's power to these. So I've got to be extremely careful. I just want to make sure that I've got power down here and I do. So this thing has not tripped. So at the moment that being tripped is not the problem. Okay, so I'm gonna shut off power again. Okay, here's what we're going to do to test these thermostats, starting with the upper thermostat. So we're gonna turn the set point down, and with the set point turned down, we should have continuity between these two screws that are circled. Then we're gonna turn the set point up, and we should have continuity between these two screws. Now going to the lower thermostat. With the set point turned down, there should be no continuity between these two screws. Then we're going to turn the set point up and there should be continuity between these two screws. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's actually do it now. Okay, so here we are at the upper thermostat. I'm going to check the, for continuity between here and here. It shows open load, open circuit, which means that we should have continuity from there to here. And yes, we do. Okay, so now if I turn the temperature up while still monitoring continuity between these two, you should hear a click and it should go to an open load. Let's see, did you hear that click? and it shows open load. And now, because we've increased the temperature setting, this is now calling for heat. So we should now have continuity here. And we do. So doing that test tells us that this thermostat is good. 
So now what we can also check is the heating element itself. Let's check the resistance on this heating element. So I've, we've got the blue wire disconnected. You can see we've got 12 and a half ohms. So this heating element is working perfectly. Okay, so that's what we can do to test the upper thermostat and the upper heating element. Now let's go to the bottom one. Okay, so here we are at the lower thermostat. Let's see if we've got continuity across this thermostat. It shows open load, so it is not currently calling for heat. So to get it to call for heat, we need to raise the, the temperature. Oh, my probe slipped. Okay, so we're gonna raise the temperature setting. You'll hear it click. Did you hear that click? And this went to zero resistance. So this switch is closed, so now it is calling for heat. Turning it down, you should hear another click. There it went, and we've now got an open circuit. So this thermostat is working just like it should. And again, we can check this heating element right here. Okay, we've got 12 and a half ohms across it. So this heating element is good. If it had not been good, it would show an open circuit, an open load, while we're touching the two screws with our probes. But this one is actually good. So that's how you test the heating element. Okay, so as far as testing them with the power off, this is basically what we can do. There's one more test we can do with the power on but you must be very careful doing that. So before I turn the power on, I'm going to reconnect the wires to the heating elements. Make sure you get these connections snug. Okay, for this test, you need a clamp type meter this will measure current. I'm gonna set it to the 200 amp setting. We're not gonna be anywhere near 200. Okay, I'm turning the power back on to the water heater, so now I've gotta be really careful. And what we're gonna do is see how much current each thermostat, or each heating element is pulling. Right now, this one is not calling for heat, so I need to turn the upper one down, and I need to turn this one up. Okay. Oh. You can hear it starting to sizzle, that water. Okay, so it's pulling about 13 amps. So this heating element is pulling current and 13 amps is right about where it should be. So this heating element is good. If it were close to zero, then obviously the heating element is bad. So now let's check the upper heating element. Okay, so I need to turn the lower one back down so it stops calling for heat. And I need to turn the upper one up so it starts calling for heat. Heard it click. Now let's see. Okay, it's pulling 20.6 amps. 20 amps times 240 volts is about 4,800 watts. And this is a 4,500 watt heating element. So it's right in the ballpark of where it should be. So this heating element is also good. 
So that's all there is to testing the thermostat and the heating element on a water heater. Personally, I've never seen a thermostat go bad, but I have seen several heating elements go bad that I've had to replace. I've got a video showing how to replace the heating element on a water heater, and I may get around to doing a video that shows how to replace the thermostat on a water heater. I really appreciate you watching this. I hope it was helpful to you. Thanks, and have a great day.